join together in our opening hymn. Is it working? Sounds like it's finished. Okay. My hope is built on nothing less. We gather together today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's share God's peace with one another. in the Kyrie. Join together in our confession and forgiveness. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the way of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbors, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Ezekiel chapters 18, verses 1 through 4, and and, uh, verses 25 through 32. Ezekiel challenges those who think they cannot change because of what their parents were and did, or who think they cannot reverse their own previous behavior. God insistently invites people to turn and live. The reading begins. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness that they have committed, 
and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. As part of a call for harmony rather than self-seeking, Paul uses a very early Christian hymn that extols the selflessness of Christ and his obedient death on the cross. Christ's selfless perspective is to be essential, is to be the essential perspective we share as the foundation for Christian accord. The reading begins, If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now than in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Gospel according to Matthew chapter 21, beginning with the 23rd verse. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John the Baptist come from heaven? Or was it a human origin? And they argued one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Then why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd. So we all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. What do you think? A man has two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to his second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, 
and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. I need some help this morning, so if anyone would like to come up and help me out, we're going to uh, do a little... I just need help with that. Thank you, guys. You won't be the only ones. You guys, yep, you can break bread. People don't hear us, and we just have to huddle together a little bit here. I'm going to stand this way so people don't see me. Okay, I'm, I'm going to show you something. So we're going to tell people, I'm going to say, put your hand on your chin, right? But we're going to put it on our cheek instead. Okay, ready? Okay, now I'll turn my microphone. Oh, did I have my microphone on? Oh, well. I bet there's a few that are going to do it. All right, so our gospel reading for today. There's these two guys, two sons. They don't, one does what the father says and one doesn't. And uh, let's think about that. What's more important, our actions or our words? So uh, everyone, help us out here. Let's see which is more important, our actions or our words. I need everyone to do this. I don't keep up with the... If this means something other than okay, I don't know, okay? That's what it's gonna to mean today. So I just need you to make this, this for me, and I need you to take, put this little circle here on, ready? You gotta do it right away, quick with me. Put it on your chin. Uh, is that your chin? Is that your chin? Oh, yeah. You guys helped me, you guys did it. Good job, good job. But to think about what was more important, what I said or what we did. How many people did this? Quite a few, didn't they? They do what we do, don't they? They did what we did. So thank you guys for helping. And that's what Jesus is saying today. It's more important what we do than what we say sometimes. So thank you guys. Here's a, some, some treats for you. Thank you guys for coming up. You can just grab. You can dig way in the bottom. That's where the candy is. <clears throat> No fair putting the roots above the candy, was it? <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Well, they got rid of the fruit, so you can grab a candy if you want. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming up today. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father from our Lord and Savior Jesus. That was an IQ test. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> um, grace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, who calls and gathers us together on this day. Have among you, have in you the mind of Christ. That's good. How do we do that? How do we do that? Now, I've told you uh, a few stories about my childhood to make you think, did this guy have a normal childhood? Um, but another one today that might push you over the edge that no, he didn't. But when I was a kid, I could think, I know even up to junior high, at, you know, and, and, and past that, I know into high school and actually uh, still, my grandfather was the most important person in my life. And, I, and for many reasons, I thought he knew everything, right? I thought he knew everything. I remember building a garage with my grandpa. We had no plans written down or anything. He just started out, just laid up, you know, and we had a garage up. He could weld uh, big things and fix them, but he could also make intricate, um, intricate designs and fish hooks and uh, jewelry. He was a, a, a rock collector and uh, could tell the difference between agates and, and uh, uh, petrified wood and all those things. And he could fix almost anything. I just thought, I just idolized him. I idolized him. And, and he complained to my mom once that if I was out in the shop with him, I would have my head in between what he was doing and, you know, so he couldn't see it. I wanted, and this is what will probably throw you for a loop. I wanted, I wanted to know everything he knew. And I wanted, and I can't remember how old I was exactly when I was thinking this, I wanted his brain to be transplanted into me. And that's kind of, if you've seen the movie Get Out, you know, uh, 
But I wanted to know everything he knew. I wanted to have the mind, the mind of my grandfather, uh, and to think about that, and to know everything that he knew. Well, that's not impossible. It's not possible, is it, to do that? But Jesus, or Paul, tells us today to have the mind of Christ. How do we do that? How do we get the mind of, of, of someone else in our head? And again, we have to be, look carefully at this, because Paul talks about this in a couple different places, and sometimes he uses the actual word for that gray matter inside our head, and sometimes, like today, he uses a word that's more associated with how are you going to think, what are you going to do when you have a difficult situation that you have, are facing? How are you going to solve that? And that's kind of the, we don't really have an English translation to that, but it just has to have the mind of Christ. Think like Jesus would in every situation, but especially in difficult situations. Now, my grandkids don't have the same vision of me that I had of my grandfather. My uh, granddaughter said, Grandpa, you got that phone? She helped me clear out my phone one time and seen I had like 400 or whatever open windows. And now she, I mean, Grandpa, you figured out how to clean out that phone? But <clears throat> to think about someone who, who you maybe idolized in your life, that's okay to do that, I think. Uh, or uh, someone whose brain, maybe a better phrase that we could use today, whose brain you pick. Right? What does it mean to pick someone's brain? Right? Whenever I've got a, a, a carpentry project that I need or done or working on, I have a brother-in-law who has worked as a carpenter since he was 18. I think he's going to retire now, uh, next March. Uh, but his whole life. There's not a question that I could come up with, maybe someone else could if they uh, know, uh, could come up with it that's going to stump him. He's the brain I pick. When we were building our houses, uh, when we were doing any type of construction, I go to uh, Ron and I pick his brain. Now there's another way to think, think about that. Think about that as picking Jesus' brain. How do we do that? Can I pick Jesus' brain? Can I encounter a problem in my life? Like I'm saying, okay, I don't know how to put these, you know, um, exaggerating a little bit here, but I didn't, when they delivered the wood from the, um, uh, from the lumber yard to build our house, they had a whole box of these long, you know, they were about three, four inches long. They had one sharp end and one flat end, and they were supposed to hold boards together, you know, and I called Ron, what are these for? Oh, those are probably the nails, you know, <laughs> to, you know, I'm just kidding. But I mean, when we come up with something like that, you know, framing a window, framing a door, all of those things, he's the guy I can go to. But Jesus wants us to do that with him, doesn't he? He wants us to bring our questions to him, to bring our problems to him, and pick his brain. How do we do that, though? How do we do that? Well, today he gave us, a, gave us that little story about, you know, is it more important what I say or what I do? And Jesus said, well, Maybe it's more important what you do, right? We have that story of those two sons. It's a way to get inside Jesus' brain on that issue. What's more important, what I say or what I do? What I do, I guess, because the first son who first said no and does it is the one who the Pharisees say, yes, he's the one who did God's will. But think about that. How does Jesus, is Jesus just going to come right out and give us a simple answer to all our questions? Wouldn't that be nice? How many of you people, how many of you had that annoying teacher, that annoying, you teachers don't have to raise their hands, that annoying teacher, you just ask them a simple question. How do you spell this word, right? How do you, and what do they say? Go look it up in the dictionary, right? Yeah. Oh, just give me the word, right? That's what I want. But what are they doing instead? They're helping me learn how. So the next time, Maybe when I'm home writing something, I know how to find that word, right? Jesus seems to do that same thing in today's gospel lesson, too. Who, where do you get this authority, they ask Jesus. Does he give them a straight answer? No, he gives them a question. He answers with a question. And those are the most annoying teachers sometimes, aren't they? Those are the most annoying ones. But they're the ones that help us learn. So as we're picking Jesus' brain to think about that, and to know that Jesus is willing to hear whatever question we have for him. 
when we were building our house <clears throat> in Fargo, and it was a, well, it was the second one that we had done from the bottom up. Um, but uh, so I knew a little, a little, just enough to be dangerous. And sometimes I would want to get some supplies at a place different than the um, big box stores because they didn't have exactly what I needed or I needed something that was a little higher maybe quality uh, than they sold at the big box stores. So I'd go to these places that were specialized in working with contractors. I don't know how they spotted me as not being a contractor. I think it was my docker pants and my hush puppy shoes. But I would go in there and I'd say, you know, I'm looking for this. And, and, and after a while, once they knew you, you know, you'd notice if there's three people at the counter, two would slip out and they'd leave the new guy. Um, but I figured, how can I, how can I kind of, you know, work my way into this so that they're, they're willing to talk to me and I can pick their brain. So I came up with a statement, and this is what I usually say when I walked in a store like that, like Brock and White, if you're familiar with these places. You know, they sell mostly to contractors that don't wear dockers or hush puppies. So they spotted me, and they'd kind of roll their eyes and say, what does this guy want? And the first thing I'd say is, how much are you charging for stupid questions today? And then uh, that's what they'd kind of laugh, you know, and I'd kind of laugh, and then I'd ask my stupid question. But, um, and they never invoiced it. They never did charge me for it. But that's okay to do with Jesus, isn't it? To say, you know, I thought I've got a dumb question today. I don't know what's going on. But what, I need to pick your, I need to pick your brain on this, Jesus. I need to pick your brain on this. So to think about that for yourself. And then to think about corporately, corporately how we are the mind of Christ in the world, okay? We are the mind of Christ. One of the, <coughs> excuse me, one of the people on the call committee, this is quite a while ago when they first started interviewing people, and we've had a couple interviews and one, one coming up, uh, so things are moving along, but we follow the Spirit. But anyway, one of the people on the call committee uh, asked me, okay, we've got kind of a, an interesting congregation here. I'm going to use political words, I'm not really... Uh, I don't really like them, but I'm going to use them because they're, they, they're easy, right? It's an easy out. We've got people on the, let's see, where are the people? Are you guys the people on the right or are you guys the people? I don't know. But we've got people on the right part, right? And we've got people on the left if we want to use those terms. Um, you know, how do we explain this to a prospective, you know, interviewee, a prospective pastor? And I said, you use it as a positive. You use, you know, because they were kind of seeing it, oh, no, oh, we're kind of split. And I said, no, don't look at it that way. Think of it as a positive, because being having the mind of Christ is not, it is not saying we're all going to think exactly the same, is it? It's not saying we're all going to think the same. We have people on both sides, and you come together, and this is both a, an individual and a communal having the mind of Christ have the mind of Christ among you and to think about how how people who you know would seem to be on the opposite can come together and do that that's that's what I think of there you know that was my answer to that question well how do we explain that to people it's a positive thing it's a good thing that we as a people of God can come together in that right that we as a people of God and what do we do well I heard I heard so the grapevine, we're going to make our goal. We're going to make our goal, and it's good news for me and Dan because we don't have to wear. And we're, I see, no, yeah, we don't have to wear our swimsuits. Okay, we're going to make our goal of over three thousand dollars for Habitat for Humanity. We're going to make that goal, and that house is being built right now. And some of you are going to work on that, you know, during the week, even above and beyond uh, the time we went there as a group. We got together on Wednesday night and, and just fed, what, 350 people gathering together, raising money for all the different things we want to support as this church. We come together with one mind, don't we? We come together with one mind, as if we have all picked Jesus' brain in our own individual ways, but we come together with that one mind, don't we? Last Sunday, after, last Sunday after church, coming together with suds and, and studs, or spuds and studs, spuds and studs, 
I thought it was a laundry thing, so I had to come. But all of those things, all of those, those things were, we have the mind of Christ among us, right? The mind of Christ among us. So when you, just for your own self, you might want to say this with, okay, Jesus, how can I pick your brain on this? We have to do that as a congregation, too. Where do you want us? What do you want us to be doing? Uh, you know, how do you want us to be at work out in the world? But when we have the mind of Christ, to have the mind of Christ, it's not having Jesus' brain transplanted in our head, but it's having Jesus' way of thinking, way of thinking becoming a part of us, of who we are. Amen. We join together in hymn number 608, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. Please stand. We join together in the Nicene Creed on this Communion Sunday as we proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. 
For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. So several things to take, several things to take note of in our announcements for today. Quilting has started up again. Bible study on Tuesday. Uh, God's Acres meeting on Wednesday. And take a look at the other thing our book study uh, for this month there is still a copy in the library of that book it's a longer book but you wouldn't have to read the whole thing if you still want to join us for that read what you can and join us um, men's breakfast next saturday looks like a good speaker coming for that on agribusiness um, wow the church supper it was just great it was just fun i felt bad um, I was teasing the Presbyterians out here when they were waiting for a couple more people to come. They all had their matching shirt. I said, we have a special place for you guys to sit. And, um, and then I came in the dining room, and they're way in the back corner. And I said, oh, that was just a fluke. No, no. It wasn't, but, uh, but it was great. It was great. It just the food just, just kept coming and coming. And I hope that, uh, thank you to everyone who worked. And uh, I think a good time was had by all. So thank you for that. And the spuds and studs, you guys had a good turnout for that. Last week, uh, lots of work happening. Uh, yes, I, I said that we're, we made our goal for habitat, and that helped pay for roofing, uh, siding, and insulation. Uh, so thank you for those gifts to Habitat for Humanity for that uh, house being built in Fergus Falls. Remember in our prayers today, Pastor Dale, there were some things up on the... Um, uh, announcements earlier on that he might have to redo his uh, um, transplant for bone marrow uh, he's in in Texas now for a special uh, tests and medication there um, Steve is with us today right Thought I seen you back there you are all right good to have you here So to remember those, and Brandon, the young man from uh, Battle Lake, who is uh, now uh, in a specialized hospital for his recuperation, uh, still going through uh, recovering from that accident for him. So remember those folks in our prayers. Have uh, any other announcements for today? I know one person has some announcements for us, so I'll let them come forward. Yep. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to take a minute to talk about an event that's going to be happening here on October 17th at 6.30, and it's regarding human trafficking. And if you maybe remember that we had an event here about five years ago, and we had a cast of and panelists who came and talked to us about human trafficking, and also about bringing it to where we live because it's happening right here. And so um, I don't know how many of you saw the film, The Sound of Freedom, um, but that touches on human trafficking and it really brought it to light, what really happens to these people who are trafficked. Um, and after I saw that film in July, I contacted Janine again and asked if we couldn't host another event here. And she said yes. Let's please do that. So we're going to have an event on Tuesday, October 17th. It's gonna start at 6.30.
we're going to have a panel of people who are very, very knowledgeable on various aspects of human trafficking. And this would be important for everyone to attend if you have children, if you have grandchildren. Um, it just is going to touch on how easily this can happen to our children, especially with the internet and the way that people are uh, approach our children in so many different ways. Um, Human trafficking happens 365 days a year in every single zip code in this country. And we are, the United States is one of the largest consumers of child trafficking, as I learned from the film, The Sound of Freedom. So I encourage you and your children to attend this event so that you can learn more about what's happening, the sad, very sad, very difficult thing to talk about that's happening with our with our people and particularly with children. So I encourage you to attend and um, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for getting that all organized for us uh, here for the 17th of uh, October. Yeah, we're in October today, aren't we? The 17th of this month. Any other announcements? If not, we'll continue with our morning offering. Please stand. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, we do lift up before you today those who are in need of your healing power. We ask that you continue to be with Pastor Dale and with Brandon, that your Holy Spirit would surround them, that you would be surrounding them with stretcher bearers that are carrying them into the healing presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our great physician as we name even others in our own hearts that are in need of your healing power today, we ask that you be with them. Father in heaven, in the midst of a world of um, 
flooding and all kinds of other chaos going on around us, uh, we sometimes miss, miss the miracles that happen right before our eyes. We ask that you would open our eyes to see the miracles of healing that have happened right here among us and that your Holy Spirit continue to inspire us to trust in you. We ask that your Holy Spirit also guide those who are struggling today uh, in our community uh, for whatever reason that might be in our state, in our nation, and in our world. People whose lives are being destroyed for one reason or another, fires or earthquakes that are still recovering from in Turkey and other countries, floods, whatever that war, whatever those things might be, that your Holy Spirit also be present there to show your care and concern that you continue to use our church, our congregation, the ELCA World Hunger Program, and, and all the other programs that we join together in one mind with uh, to serve the world. We ask all of these things in your name. And all God's people said, Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give. It is indeed right in our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through your sa our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choir of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and follow the ushers uh, forward. Uh, today, anyone who has their hands open, no matter what your age, uh, will receive the bread. Thank you. 
Please stand. 
And now may the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you have fed us. You have fed us with this one food, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. You have fed us to show us your forgiveness. You have shed us, fed us to strengthen us to go out and serve you. We ask that we do that as individuals and as this congregation. In your name we pray. Amen. We join together in the benediction. Thine is the glory in Easter hymn as we go out into the world.
peace serve the Lord and remember the poor. Thanks for sitting in with confirmation. I appreciate that. Hopefully we make it into this question. Oh man, I know. I know. Hey, hey Mark. Good to see you. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning, good morning, guys. Hey, good morning. Good to see you. <laughs> good, good. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, good morning. Good morning. Hey, you guys got a busy day. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, guys. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning, good morning, guys. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Alex. 